Welcome to How To with Instant Atlas Excel Data Manager. This video follows on from the How To with Instant Atlas Publisher video. And if you want any more information on how to change the look and feel of your report, you'll need to refer to the How To with Instant Atlas Designer video. Today I'm going to take you through how to change the data that is currently in your atlas. At the moment we've got dummy data that was created when we published this report. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the iaworkbook.xls which comes when you with the software when you download it and I'm going to take you through a couple of the different tabs we've got. Geography and filters and it does need to be called that is where you define which geography and which filters you're using for your atlas. You can see here in cell A1, I've got the word polygon. Now that is, could be, it could be polygon, line or point, but it does need to be whatever your base geography is. Then I've got the title of my base geography. So for this example, I've got postcode sectors. And in columns A and B, you can see here that I've got my code names and my names here. Then I've got my links written in column C. So I've got the word link written in here, and these links that are written in here, which are currently notes.htm, could be your website, could be a PDF or an Excel document or a Word document. And then we've got a filter written in for column D. The word filter goes in D1, then the name of that filter, and then the values of that filter. You can see here I've got Edinburgh Centre, South, West, East, and North. And that will show up in my atlas. I've got this IA data sheet too. Now the only important thing about this naming is it needs to begin with the word IA data sheet. You can have whatever you like after the word IA data sheet. This makes it active and you can see here this is where all my data lies. You can have more than one IA data sheet if you like. In row one I've got my themes. I'm going to change these themes to be called something slightly different. So let's change this one here to be Hospital Admissions. And you can see here that this Hospital Admissions cell is merged right across from column C to column F. Now that means that everything in these columns is part of that theme. For my indicators here, that's what is defined in row 2, you can see it's merged across two columns here, which means that these two columns here are part of this indicator one. Now let's change that name to be something slightly different, under 18 years, and then let's change indicator two to be over 18 years. Okay. Now remember that this data here is purely fictitious and is used for this example purpose. I've got the links for my indicators written in row 3, whereas the links written in my geographies and filters worksheets were associated to each of these geographic features. In row 4, I'm defining whether or not the data for that indicator is numeric, count or categoric. Count is to count something, numeric is all other numbers, and categoric is any text values that you've got. In row 5, I've got my dates. Now that can be either written in a, in a number format like 2004 or could be text as January is written here. It will just be picked up as text. I've got my data values written in from row 6 downwards. And right at the bottom here you've got your comparison areas. Now comparison areas don't show up in the map, they show up in a little box with the name and the data that is associated to that name for each of the different themes and indicators that you've got. Now I'm going to change this one here, this code. It can be any unique code you like, so I'm going to change that to a random code, Edinburgh, E-D-I, and but it's really important to remember that I copy that over to my Geographies and Filters worksheet. So let's do that now. So they need to be the same in the Geography and Filters and the IA data sheets. And they also need to be in the same order. Now, you can get to this add-in from the add-ins tab here if you're on uh, Excel 2007, but if you're on Excel 2003, what you need to do is go into Tools, Add-ins, and then select this um, Instant Atlas add-in. That will become a floating toolbar for you. 
Now, if you need any help on finding that, you can go to our website, www.instantatlas.com, or contact our support team. I click on IA export to export this data to a data.xml file. You don't need any programming experience to be able to do this. It's literally as easy as clicking a button. So I'm going to go to the folder where my atlas is, and I'm going to save this data.xml file over my current data.xml file, which was produced with dummy data when I published the atlas. So let's save that there. Yes, I want to go over the top of that, and OK, that's generated. Now it's as easy as refreshing my atlas now so that I can see that real data, fictitious real data I might add, uh, for Edinburgh. Okay, so you can see all those different uh, areas have got their data in there now, and you can see I've got my theme, my indicator, and my date. I can change the indicator and date that I like here to a different one, so you can see how now that works. Okay, now we've got over 18 years for 2004. You can see how quick and easy this is to create using the Excel Data Manager. And if you want any further information on how to change the look and feel of your, of your Atlas, all you need to do is have a look at the how-to with Instant Atlas Designer video.